the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Occupy Wall Street by way of Occupy Fleet Street is turning into your own meat street. As expected, the forces of the last gasp have dispatched their faceless assault bots with their black motorcycle helmets into the parks, plazas and sidewalks of this debauched culture and looted landscape into the dying cities of materialism on their homeward bound course, which is the eventual destiny of this particular format, marching onto its own particular entropy with its final destination. Imperialism has its denouement, as do all of the other temporary forms grafted onto the original tribal state. Every one of these systems has their perversion specialists and money manipulation experts, and we know who they are in present day, in tandem with it being same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. The police and the military work for the money men. The perversion specialists warp the cultures through facetious and gratuitous laws that transform perception by legal decree. It's the law. It must be right. The police and military are those whose conscience has adapted into the performance of any and every outrage in exchange for a paycheck. They're enforcing the law, and the law must be right. Meanwhile, there are those in the police and military who still retain a semblance of conscience and know that they are being screwed the same way as those they are hammering with their bat arms. In this time of awakening, many with guns in their hands are waking up to the injustices of torture and murder of the goat herders and villagers in foreign lands. They did it for the bankers and the bankrupt slogans, whether it be Semper Fi, Sieg Heil, or in hoc Signor Vinges. There are no parasites as insidious, vile, venal, and cold as the bankers. They are the original Satanists. Stop the bankers, and you stop the clocks. You stop the wars. You stop the poverty. You stop the inequality. You stop every evil financed by them, and they are considerable. It's a simple thing. The same way that the war against the Muslims is about Muslim bankers not charging interest because usury is the king of pain in the lands of the oppressed that extend from sea to poison sea. Also courtesy of the bankers who never met an environmental disaster that they didn't like. First they destroy it and then they muster another industry that pretends to clean it up. They manufacture diseases in order to make the practice of medicine a high profit industry. They manufacture laws that make the private prison industry a high profit scam. They destroy the educational system to graduate ignorance and stupidity for the purpose of assimilating propaganda and social control. They take every potentially good thing and rework it for maximum profit. They outlaw every positive methodology to destroy the possibility of competition with the varieties of bad shit that interface with all kinds of other bad shit that has put us all in the shit where we are now. It's a simple thing, people. Let's look at the pharmaceutical industry by example. The pharmaceutical industry kills and makes infirm more people than the illegal drug industry has ever done since back in the day when they were providing all the drugs they are now illegal. I'm pretty convinced that the Harrison Act came about because certain forces in bed with the international bankers saw how much profit they could be gained from opium since it was prohibited. To comprehend why that is, you only have to go back to study the Boxer Rebellion and the Opium Wars and the results and you can fast forward to the Afghanistan War if you like as well. Of interest is the fact that part of the Boxer Rebellion was about the influx of the satanic Christian missionaries into Chinese culture. There are two Christianities, always keep that in mind, and one of them has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Okay, Western medicine is allopathic. That means it treats the symptoms and not the cause. Who is the biggest purveyor of symptom suppressants and sundry? Why? That would be the pharmaceutical industry. Who profits from shutting down all natural healing techniques and substances? Why? That would be the pharmaceutical industry. I want to show you how wide the net of vicious enterprise extends. I suppose I am speculating a bit here now, but given all we know, it sounds as plausible as anything. What industry is most responsible for poor health on the part of the Western populations? That would be the food industry, in tandem with the chemical industry. Hmm, isn't the pharmaceutical part of the chemical industry? The food industry employs researchers and scientists to mess around with the dynamics of lady nature. They employ financial experts to figure out how to lower costs and to maximize profits, which means using palm oil and soy oil instead of the more expensive but healthier components. Now, consider the sweetness substitutes that I don't really have to get into. 
extrapolate out into genetically modified foods and let your imagination take you on an excursion of speculation. Now, consider that those who invest in the food industry are almost certainly involved in the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry, and you can suppose, assume, or outright claim that there is little doubt that they make food which makes people sick to send profits to another arm of the blood-sucking octopus that straddles the globe. But there's no conspiracy. Nah, there's no conspiracy among the money men around the world to maintain this abusive system and to look for new ways to make it worse if only there is some greater profit to be gained. Every religion except for the one that operates under the Talmud espouses mercy, charity, peacefulness, compassion and attendant virtues, yet, yet, what do we see promoted from the pernicious pulpits by the twisted priests of most of them? Why are we in a time of religious wars that serve the interests of bankers? Look at your ministers, people. Look to your philosophers and pundits of the moment who are given so much media face time by the people who own the media for one reason, to keep the truth buried under a land full of lies for the purpose of profit. In a time of darkness, the mind of darkness is preeminent via the reports of the senses of the propensities of the mind and heart of the one interpreting them. Factor in the mass mind and peer pressure and you have a dark and viscous soup, as sticky as tar and difficult to extricate from. It's no wonder that people feel trapped, have given up, or are completely unaware of what is happening to them. If it were not for the benevolence of the cosmos and the appearance of Mr. Apocalypse and his walking stick, we'd be toast. It's not an accident that Rick Perry forgot his lines at the debate. It's no surprise that Strauss Kahn is much deeper into the goblin light than just being a serial abuser. It's no surprise that so many things are coming to light and that the efforts of the damned are being frustrated at every turn. Some would say, no, they had all of this planned a long time ago. This can't be stopped. I beg to differ and I submit that no one has ever pulled it off in recorded history and not before that either. It always gets to a place like this first, the place of the summing up. The Sandusky affair, which will prove to connect all over the place to all sorts of people, has been exposed by a tap from Mr. Apocalypse's walking stick. Mr. Apocalypse is dancing across the world stage like Gene Kelly. He's singing in the rain. He's wearing mirror shades. He's humming an old Robert Johnson tune. He's on his way to the crossroads to collect on some debts. It's a wonderful irony that those who have spent their lifetime putting people into debt and operating off the principle of debt are now going to find themselves very, very deeply in debt and unable to resolve it, except in a most timeless and ancient fashion. It's all under control, and beautifully so. There's nothing unpredictable except for those of us, most of us, who can't predict what is coming because why spoil the surprise? In the meantime, that uncertainty is meant to provoke and inspire us to be better than we might have been in the process. Keep holding the truth to be self-evident, and it will certainly become so. Sooner or later, once it burns away the rubbish and rags that conceal it, it's all about the right kind of desire and aspiration. This is what turns away the veils. Some say that passionlessness is the key, but that's just another way up the mountain. You're either climbing it or you're at the base camp arguing with the experts.